Well, welcome to Ravensdale Bible Academy. Today's course is Think Again Christian Fact Check. And what we're looking at is today's lesson. The slide is a plea to make America free again. And what you could see here is President Donald Trump. Uh, you see him with his MAGA hat, Make America Great. And then Google and Apple and, and Amazon and Twitter and Facebook are, are represented in this slide. Well, the, the slide shows how, how big tech has silenced the United States of America. I want that to sink in. The, the, the big tech, a, a, a private company, has been able to shut down conservative platforms, conservative businesses, uh, including the president. And, and so what we see here is, is some satire, and we see this idea that, again, well, the mission of Donald Trump was to make America great. Therefore, kind of the, the implication here is the mission of the big tech is, is to silence the conservative movement. Um, and so there's a great fear then of censorship, which is a great fear of the freedom of free speech. And so the outcry then is let, let, let's forget make America great. Let's make America free again, right? Free. Well, America's founded on documents like the Bill of Rights, which is in the Constitution, and, and the pillar of the Bill of, Bill of Rights is, is the freedom of speech. It's, it's, it's one of our most beloved, cherished, um, uh, you know, principles, and it it's, gives us the, the opportunity to have public opinion, uh, to debate, to argue, to disagree with our, our president, uh, to challenge ideas. It, it gives us the opportunities to, to put forth ideas, questions in the open market. And so in this past uh, few months, what we've seen are, are election irregularities. I'll stay away from, from fraud because coming from a fraud background, fraud is actually uh, something that has, has technically been proven. So these are irregular irregularities. These are curious things. When we see videos of people uh, sending people out of the room and then pulling out buckets of, of votes, when we see videos of people uh, promoting the paying of people to vote, okay, when we see video of, of ballots being dumped in the side of a ditch and they're all for one candidate, Donald Trump, when we see irregularities like mathematical probability, Im impossibilities for thousands of votes to shift overnight, uh, when we see mathematical impossibilities of X amount of counties that have been won and in the history of elections, no president has been able to ever uh, overcompensate for that. Well, these are what we would call documented irregularities. And so... As the president was claiming fraud, as the president was was challenging the final outcome, which, by the way, the our last elections, Hillary Clinton challenged the outcome and has challenged it the entire presidency of Donald Trump. She's never relented from that. Al Gore challenged the outcome when he was uh, going against George Bush, and they took it to court. So this isn't anything new that a standing president or a president to be would uh, would disagree with 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 the results they would want to challenge the idea what changed though was censorship what changed was a private company silencing uh, a position so so twitter decided to not allow donald trump to tweet out his opinion it is an opinion but his opinion was backed by data. His opinion was backed by video evidence, by physical evidence, by lawyers. And yet Facebook and Twitter, who are not legal experts, they are not judges, they aren't politicians, they're, they're, they're not lawyers. So what gives them the right to make a decision that we can't freely hear the debate that we can't freely hear what the president of the United States wants to communicate. Well, that's why we're, we're concerned. 
Not only was Trump banned, but so was Parler. Parler is kind of the conservative version of Twitter. And they, they were both banned. Twitter's a, a multi-billion dollar company. That, that, that a company or a team of companies, and we'll get to that in a, in a minute, could actually just turn the lights off and, and close a business overnight. That should be alarming to any free America. So when we say let's make America free again, it sounds like this is a legitimate concern. Well, where does this concern come from? Uh, some call it big tech, some call it GAFTA, it's, you know, stands for Google, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Apple, Microsoft. The, these are kind of the, uh, the big companies who in one way or another are, are linked together. So, for instance, you, you have what's called a, a platform, right? If, if I'm Netflix, if I'm Netflix, I, I, I host my business essentially on, on AWS, right, for Amazon. I, my, my, my website is on Amazon's web services, AWS. And so if Amazon decides to put me out of business, they just have to turn the lights off because Netflix does not stand alone. Okay, if, I, if I'm Twitter, Twitter uses AWS as a platform. So who really owns Twitter? Well, if AWS tells Twitter what to do, then we've got an issue. We've got the two main operating systems from computers, Apple and Microsoft, that, that essentially house all these products. So you see how they're all really linked in together and they can make decisions that affect all of us. Well, what does the Bible say about this? How are we supposed to, as Christian Americans, approach this? Yes, we have conservative beliefs. Yes, we have American patriotism. Yes, we love the Constitution. We like rules. We like laws. Is there anything else that we can glean from the Bible? And as I was processing this, I was, I was considering Jude 3 and Jude there's only one chapter. Chapter 1, verse 3 says, uh, I felt it necessary to you appealing that you contend earnestly. You contend earnestly for the faith which is in you. And so our faith, the Christian faith, we're, we're, we're called to, that we have to contend for it. Not, not fight physically, but, but fight verbally, right? We, we, we're called to do something. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, What's that something? We're called to be ambassadors for Christ. We, we represent Christ. And so I'm concerned, not from the standpoint of watching movies or using Instagram or Twitter. I'm concerned what the ramifications of my free speech is as a church. I'm concerned what the ramifications are of my free sp speech as a pastor and as a Christian. Because I need to contend for my faith. I don't really need to fight for Netflix and the ability to make movies, but I, I do need to preach the gospel and I don't want to be silenced. I want to be able to put my sermons on YouTube, on my inter internet site. I would like to be able to host my, my school uh, on, a, on, a, on a website, right, on a hosting server. And so I rely on these companies. I rely on big tech. And so there comes a point where in order for me to contend for my faith, I'm probably going to have to get involved in this from one aspect or, or another, because I want to be an ambassador for Christ. I, I want to be uh, like, a, like a light that's a beacon and, and to allow my light to shine. And that's a lot harder if my light can only be seen in a small little room as opposed to the world wide web. Well, again, what, what makes this even more complex and more concer uh, concerning is, well, technically speaking, big tech is not the government. So when we have constitutional rights uh, from the government, it begins with, well, the government not silencing you, the government not arresting Donald Trump, the government not uh, arrest, you know, shutting down churches or pastors or online uh, services. And so there, there is kind of a, a loophole, and that loophole is, well, these companies have a special deal with, uh, 
with America right now, a special deal with the government. So they have certain rules, Section 230, you maybe you've heard of that, that allow them to operate, even though they're not the government, they, they are an extension of the government. That's what makes it tricky because typically these are individual companies that for the most part provide free services. And so if you want to join Twitter or Instagram for free, you're not paying for it and it's their company and they want to uh, cut you off, ban you, censor you, or, you know, cancel your subscription from their own business sake. It's the, it's their right. Now we do have discrimination laws and we do have free speech laws. And so these are being challenged as we speak. Parler is challenging uh, the decision right now. But, but there are some loopholes that, that seem to allow these services to silence outsiders based upon their rules. It, it kind of goes back to the, uh, the baker being able to have the ability to say no to a, a homosexual company that wants a gay cake. It, it falls kind of under those, those same, same realm. Well, the third kind of aspect that we see that's even a, another piece to the puzzle is this idea of collusion. The government has laws against monopolies. See, the government didn't want any one company, Standard Oil, to be the only American company who can sell oil because then they could hold everybody hostage and charge a price that nobody can pay. Uh, Ma Bell, you know, the, the electric company, for you know, had to be what's called broken up into different pieces. Uh, Microsoft was was addressed with this because the government doesn't want uh, one company to form what's called a monopoly and that one company holds all the cards. So for instance, let's just say there was only one computer company in the world, you would have to buy their computer. They could charge whatever they want. They can make any rules they want. There's nothing you could do. So our government tries to protect us that way. The other way our government tries to protect us is uh, what's called like through racketeering. Maybe you've heard that term or collusion it doesn't allow these companies to work together in harmony as they form kind of a, a mega monopoly, right? Yes, they're independent, but if they do everything in, in harmony together, like cancel the president from Facebook, Twitter, uh, at the same time, Amazon, well, now we're talking about collusion. And so we definitely have laws against that as well. So it's going to be interesting to see where we go from here. But at this point, at this point, um, traditionally, the Bill of Rights Constitution protect, protects us and all citizens and our free speech. Um, it appears as though big tech is in collusion and working as a monopoly to silence conservatives. They've already done it to the president. They've already done it to Parler. Uh, they're doing it to different individuals. They've done it impartially with PragerU. Um, and the problem is that they're becoming too powerful. Their voice is too big. And financially, we see that they're supporting too many politicians who then pass laws to favor them even more. Now, let me encourage you. America is still free. It's the freest country in the world. But the walls are, are caving in. Uh, and we're heading towards a different path. So think again, Christian.